Hello friends, I am Den, a principal advocate at Microsoft, and today I'm gonna to be talking about how we produce API documentation on docs.microsoft.com. It's a topic that comes up every once in a while on Twitter, and I see people asking, well, okay, you have a lot of APIs, there's a lot of different APIs, how do you do that? This video is your answer. API documentation on docs.microsoft.com is a special class of docs. It's special because it's generated almost entirely automatically. I'm saying entirely because somebody still needs to write the code and the code comments that come with the code itself that is then used for documentation. So as you can see, there's some human involvement in it, but when it comes to producing documentation, it takes weeks, if not months, to document everything and every single change. At Microsoft, we make those changes very, very frequently. So you can imagine if a new package comes out with a thousand new APIs, doing this by hand is quickly going to get to a scale where it's just not humanly possible. That's why we don't do that. We automated this process. On docs.microsoft.com, we generate API documentation for .NET, we generate it for Python, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, and REST APIs. So as you can see, there's quite a few different options that we need to make sure that we account for. That is aside from the fact that we also automatically document things like the Azure CLI. So how do we scale this process? How do we make sure that humans are not actually required to write this all by hand? Well, every single one of these languages has its own set of tools that are used for documentation. For .NET, there's a tool called MDoc that's been written by the awesome folks at Xamarin. For Java, you're probably already familiar with Javadoc, the standard application to produce Java documentation. So if you're familiar with the iframes, you've seen that HTML output, that's what we use on docs.mxl.com as well. For Python, we're using Sphinx that produces restructured text or RST files. But again, that's not standard docs.mxl.com format, so I'll talk about that in a second, but we use that for Python code. For JavaScript and TypeScript, we rely on JSDoc and TypeDoc, all open source tools. And for REST, we're relying on open API specs or as commonly referred to, Swagger. So back to the original topic. Well, if there's all these different formats, how exactly does it get to docs.microsoft.com? Well, we have a trick up our sleeve because for every single one of these tools, we've developed open source plugins that are available today on GitHub that you can download, install locally, and do the same thing that we do on our website. But what do those plugins actually do? Well, all they do is they transform platform-specific documentation code into YAML. You heard it here first. It's YAML. Yes, that YAML. But kidding aside, YAML is the format that our system, DocFX, is using to publish documentation for APIs because YAML given the fact that it's automatically generated and no human needs to actually look at, it's very easy to maintain and edit automatically. It's structured and it provides a unified way to maintain relationships between entities. So if I'm documenting a class or an interface that has a bunch of methods, functions, and descriptions that go with them, it's very easy to plug them in in a format that is consistent across all the languages. That's why we went with this format. That's also one of the reasons why we don't have editing enabled on most API documentation pages, because we don't want you to deal with YAML. In all seriousness though, the reason why we're doing this is because we wanna make sure that the code is the source of truth. So if I'm using the code to produce the NuGet packages and then I have the samples and the descriptions in IntelliSense, we want that to reflect the same thing in the generated documentation. That's why there's only one place where folks need to edit those comments. It's the code. And then we pull the latest version, we generate the docs and publish them on our site. And you might be wondering, okay, great. You told me about all these awesome tools, plugins. What can I do to do the same thing in my own organization or my own company? Well, lucky for you, all the plugins, all the tools are open source. They're on GitHub. There is documentation for them. So check out the links in the description of this video. This should give you plenty of insights. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on Twitter. Always happy to help. See you next time.